In today's video for Grade 9 Advanced Science, we're going to get introduced to a very important piece of laboratory glassware called the graduated cylinder. It's used to measure volumes of liquids very accurately in the lab. When you look at a graduated cylinder, here's one in my hand, um, you can see why it's called a cylinder. Okay, It's got a circular top and bottom, and it, when it holds a liquid, the liquid will be in the shape of a cylinder. But why is it called a graduated cylinder? The word graduated can mean different things in English. When you finish school, you can say that you've graduated from school, but it has another meaning that's less familiar with most people. I've got a piece of uh, wood here in my hand. It's a little wooden stick, um, but it has these numbers on it, and it's got these little tick marks along the edge. That's what change it, changes it from being just a wooden stick into something more useful that we normally just call a ruler. The ruler has those numbers and tick marks to let you measure length or distance. Those are called graduations. So each of these little tick marks on the edge of the cylinder is a graduation on the edge. So this could be referred to as a graduated piece of wood or a graduated stick. When you look at a graduated cylinder, again, you see the glass cylinder, but along the face of it, you can see something like on the edge of the ruler. There are numbers and then there are those little tick marks in between. So those are the graduations on the graduated cylinder. Now when you see a liquid in the cylinder, in the picture here you can see there's some liquid here that's filled up to about here. The liquid forms a surface which is often curved. And that curved surface is referred to as the meniscus of the liquid in the cylinder. Okay, that's a very important word. Make sure you've got that written down and you know its definition. It's usually the curved surface of liquid in the graduated cylinder. In grade 11 chemistry, we'll look at why the liquid usually forms that curved surface, but it doesn't always. In a plastic graduated cylinder like this, the meniscus is actually almost flat. So it's not always a very pronounced curve, but in a glass cylinder, you can actually possibly see in this picture, it forms a pretty pronounced curved shape. When you're looking at the uh, liquid in the cylinder to measure its volume, two things to keep in mind. You want to look at eye level. So some people will lift the cylinder up so they can look at it at eye level. I don't really recommend that in grade 9. Um, you can easily spill something when you're constantly lifting it and putting it back down. Also, if you're not holding the cylinder perfectly vertical when you're trying to look at eye level, you'll get the incorrect volume. So the best way to look at eye level is to put the cylinder on the tabletop and then you crouch down until you can see it. The second thing to remember is when looking at the volume of liquid in the cylinder, always look at the bottom of the meniscus. So when you look at this curved surface, you would not look over here on the edge, you wouldn't look over here on the edge, you'd look at that curved surface and you'd look at the very bottommost point of that curved surface. That's the bottom of the meniscus where you want to look to record the volume. Graduated cylinders come in many different sizes. Um, when you look at one, you'll see different scales on them as well. The graduations will have different numbers. On the one that we see here in the, here in the picture, we can see a 50 and up here a 60. So this is going up by 10 milliliters on this graduated cylinder. We refer to that as the major scale. So the major scale here, 50 to 60, would be 10 milliliters. Then we notice that between the 50 and 60, there are 10 little spaces formed by those little graduations. So each of those little spaces represents the minor scale. So if you take the major scale, which was 10 milliliters, and divide by 10 spaces, you get 10 divided by 10 is 1 milliliter. So the minor scale here would be 1 milliliter. Each of these tick marks represents 1 milliliter. So this is 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, the slightly longer line in the middle, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60. So the major scale here was 10, and the minor scale, 10 divided by 10 spaces, was 1 milliliter. Okay, I've got other graduated cylinders. Here's a large graduated cylinder that you probably won't use very much in the lab, but our lab assistant uses it to prepare solutions for us. 
It's a 500 mil graduated cylinder. Can you see what its major scale would be? The numbers go 450 to 500 or 400 to 450. So the major scale would be 50 milliliters. Then you look in between two of those numbers, between 450 and 500, there are 10 spaces. So you take the major scale, which was 50, you divide by 10, and you get that the minor scale here is five milliliters. So each of those little tick marks represents five milliliters. So if this is 450, 455, 460, 465, 470, 475 is right in the middle, and you can keep going 480, 485, 490, 495, and 500. So you can check your understanding of the major and minor scale by just counting like I did there. Here's a slightly smaller cylinder. This one's a 250 milliliter cylinder. We say it's 250 mils because it's the maximum volume it could measure. Notice that graduated cylinders are often um, labeled with a temperature value. This is 20 degrees Celsius, meaning that when they're most accurate, the volumes should be read at a temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. This one also says TC, which means it's designed to measure how much liquid is contained, to contain how much liquid is contained in the cylinder. So this one's major scale from 230 to 250 or for 210 to 230 is 20 milliliters, the major scale. Again, there are 10 tick marks, 10 spaces in between. So if you take 20 milliliters, the major scale, and divide by 10, you'll get two milliliters, which is the minor scale on this cylinder. So each of those tick marks is two milliliters. So 230, 232, 34, 36, 38, 240 is a slightly longer one in the middle, and then you keep counting up to 250. Here's a 100 mil graduated cylinder. Can you see what its major scale would be? The major scale is 10 milliliters, 80, 90, 100, going up by tens. Again, there's 10 spaces here. There's not always 10 spaces. The examples I'm giving you here have 10 spaces, so always check that. So you take the major scale, 10, you divide by 10 spaces, and the minor scale here would be one milliliter. So each of these little spaces, each little graduation represents one milliliter. Here's a cylinder you'll use quite a bit in the lab. This is a plastic graduated cylinder. It's a 50 milliliter total volume. The major scale, maybe you can see, from 30 to 40 to 50, the major scale is 10 milliliters. Again, there are 10 tick marks, 10 graduations. So take that 10 milliliter major scale, divide by 10, and each of the graduations here is one milliliter. All right, so the major scale and the minor scale on a graduated cylinder. Before we finish, just let's see if we can agree on what volume is in this cylinder here, keeping in mind that if we were doing this properly, we would be looking at eye level. The iPad that I'm recording with is a bit of an angle here. So the first thing I would do is note that the major scale is 10 milliliters. I would note that there's a minor scale here of 10 divided by 10 is 1 milliliter, so this is 50, 55, 60, 51, 52, 53, 54, etc. Now that I understand the scale of my cylinder, I can tell that the meniscus is in between 50 and 55, or perhaps between 50 and 60. So on my data sheet, if I were recording this volume, I know it's going to be 50-something milliliters. Now remember the minor scale is 1 and we're supposed to look at eye level, and we're supposed to read uh, from the bottom of the meniscus. So looking at the bottommost point right there in the cylinder of the liquid, I can see it's past 51, 52, but it's not past 53. So it's 52 point something on my data sheet. That's what I would write down. Now looking at that bottom of the meniscus, it's slightly closer to 53 than it is to 52. So in your head, the usual rule of thumb is to take that minor scale of one milliliter and divide by 10. So we should be able to estimate where that meniscus is to the nearest 0.1 milliliters. So 
So for example, if I think that it's closer to 53 than it is to 52, maybe I'm gonna say it's 52.7 or 52.8. If I argued that it was 52.7 and my partner said 52.8 milliliters, we wouldn't debate that. We would just flip a coin and write one of those numbers down. Right? But your numbers should not always end in a zero, so you shouldn't always be saying that's 58.0 or 52.0. They should also not end in 0.5, which means you're just always reading them right in the middle. Sometimes a volume might end in 0.5, yes, but they shouldn't always just be 0.5 because you're not then making a good estimate of the bottom of the meniscus. So one more time, the major scale was 10, the minor scale is one milliliter, so 50, 51, 52, 53, this is between 52 and 53, slightly closer to 53, so 52.7 would be a good estimate, 52.8 perhaps. All right, so good luck. There's a worksheet for you and some practice reading graduated cylinder volumes on the course website.